Hey, good morning. We're live here again. Thank you very much. As you see, I'm going to log on into uh, Twitter and Periscope here. So, see? Alright, hold on. Let's get it logged up. Open up the Twitter app. Alright, the Twitter app. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it. It seems to be a little glare there. Alright. But anyway, you open up the Twitter app and you'll see you get your tweet page. Hit your tweet button for you tweeters. <laughs> right? And then you're going to see your go live page here. You'll see. Hit go live. Alright. That's all you got to do. And just wait for it to load up. Alright. And then hit what's happening. Give yourself a title. And that's what I'll do. Alright. And let's go. So we'll go with uh, God's spokesman. Alright. Godspokesman.com. And the title, like it is there on Facebook Live, is How to Be Spiritual. E I R uh, Spiritually A L L Spiritually Born. Again, does that look good? Yeah, all right. And you hit the go live button and waiting, and bingo, we're live here. Flip the camera around, <coughs> and we're live on Twitter and Periscope simultaneously. You turn the volume up, all right. Let me put this in its holder here. Oh. a second people <laughs> uh, gotta turn this around hold on all right sorry about that people I need to move this down again see I had this all set up yesterday and had to move things so hold on ah there we go all right let's get this set up a little bit better hey hi there whoever you are there on Twitter. So tweet tweet, as they say. All right. Oh, there's my thing. All right. All right. Let me get going here, guys. Sorry for the confusion Monday morning. So, hey, hi there, Daniel Omoko joined on Facebook Live. All right, guys. Let me have a drink of coffee. Well, today, <coughs> let me get my dodo bird, because I know I'm going to get some dodos out there today. They always come around. <coughs> All right. What's that say down here on Facebook Live? Invite friends. Let's see what that happens. All right, so we're going to invite them. Can I invite all at one time? Well, let's just click it on and see what happens. A lot of people there. Alright. Let's see. Can we just keep going? Alright. I guess it's working. Alright. So today is the uh, day after Sunday, the 19th. 
This morning here in, uh, okay, I guess I better do the intro. I got my papers out. Like I've told you folks before, we're doing a remodeling here, and so everything is taken down. And it's going to be like that for several weeks, so you're just going to have to overlook the mess. We had to take all the books, everything out. We're getting some new flooring, and so... And find out that we won't be able to get it done for another two weeks or so. So that means that our office and everything will have to stay disarranged. This is where we're at. For you that don't know, we're in Missouri, in the United States. Missouri is right there in the center of the U.S., okay? There you are, Facebook Live people. That's Missouri, all right? Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Huh? Pretty. That's a little colloquialism from the Midwest. Pretty, as Tootie Bird says. All right, here we go. This is what we're about here. All right. Protestant Christian... <laughs> Protestant Christian Bible. That's what this is about. All right. And uh, this particular Bible, the Protestant Christian Bible, I've had a lot of people, believe it or not, that Christians have never heard of the Protestant Christian Bible. Okay, they just don't realize it's our current English Bible. All right, it's been translated in umpteen dozen languages. The Protestant Christian Bible was first translated into English in 1500. Hey, hi there, Russia. But this is what we're about right here. This is the Protestant Christian Bible. There's the Old and New Testament, and we <coughs> believe in that book. As the only book from God to man. All right? It's been around for 2,000 years. The words haven't changed in the New Testament. All right? There is no new revelation. There's no additional revelation. There's no other meanings. There's no evolution of meanings of that word. It's the same. God says he doesn't change. Same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay, it's just that simple, folks. <coughs> All right. And takes care of that for him. All right, this is my name. You can Google my name. All right. Norman Edgar. I'm 71. My wife Selma broadcast. She's 70. All right. We broadcast on across all the social media sites. WordPress, Periscope, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, LinkedIn, Google Plus, and VK. All right. So that's for your information. Here's some more for your information. Hashtag Edgar Norman. Instagram. Twitter. Facebook. Norman Etker, O-E-T-K-E-R, that'll get you. All right, our website, godspokesman.com, okay? All right. All right, now, something I like to read. I've been reading it all the time. All right, to become a Christian, how to be born again, that's what today's message is about. It's about understanding these three things. Grace, justification, and repentance. The majority of you that listen to this are clueless. You don't know what it really means. You're just guessing. All right? And that's the problem. That's why you're not spiritually born again. You're just a religionist. And I'm talking to the people that go to the churches with buildings with a cross on the top on Sunday or Wednesday night or whenever. Saturday even. Even those deceived people. The Messianics, you know. They believe you got to do the Old Testament to prove you're a Christian, you know. Don't eat pork and uh, observe the Sabbath, the ceremonies, all that. The Jews for Jesus. It's a, They're foolish people. 
That's what the word says. The Apostle Paul calls them fools. And that's what they are. All people that observe the Sabbath, believing that you have to do that. To demonstrate you're a Christian, you've been deceived, you're a fool. All right? Now, <clears throat> this is something I read a long time ago, and I, it stayed with me. You've heard it before if you've listened to me. I'm going to read it to you again. This is, this is what someone wrote, and I believe it to be pretty accurate. The Scriptures, the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus the Apostle and Evangelist alone set forth the true reason of our being in this world. Not for enjoyment, but for trial. Not to gain temporal pleasures or possessions, but that our souls may be disciplined and prepared for immortal honor and glory. Uh, that's, a, that's just a naked truth. And the final one I read, and you guys always like this, this is to the evangelicals, the religious right, <laughs> so-called Christians, this is to you. But there were also false prophets among the people. This is New Testament, Second Peter, the Apostle Peter talking to the folks in that believed in Jesus. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies. Heresies are false teachings. They're not in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. Even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with stories they have made up. And that's the simple truth, folks. That's what they will do. I found it to be true with all of them. All right. Again, I, I titled this today, Monday, uh, the 19th of June. The name is How to Be Spiritually Born Again. To be spiritually born again, you will have a sincere conversation, you and God alone. It won't be some rebound off of an emotional event. It might get you to that place that you think you need to talk to God, but this conversation won't be but you confessing to God your need for forgiveness of your sins. That's the conversation that you and you alone are going to have with God. You're going to say to God, you're sorry for your sins. Okay? Number two, at the same time, you're going to want Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior because it's through His shed blood that you're able to to accept Him. You're able to be saved. It's through Jesus that you can be regenerated. It's through Jesus and the Father's divine favor and grace, power and strength for you to even become saved. And third, you're going to repent. That means turn to obedience to the Protestant Christian Bible alone. No other book, no church doctrine, but to the New Testament writings of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. You're going to read them. You're going to understand, and you're going to obey. If you don't agree to do that, you're not a Christian. If you think you can just bow your head and close your eyes, slip your hand up, and somebody's going to lead you in a sinner's prayer, and you're saved, you're, you're just in la-la land. If you think you can be water baptized, named by the Son of the Holy Ghost, and you're a Christian, you're in La La Land. It's not going to work, folks. I know people say that's all you got to do: confess with your mouth, and you'll be saved. Don't believe that. The church house is chuck full of people that say they believe in Jesus, and they know more living for Jesus than a man in the moon. They're living for you know, number one. Alright, so that's how you become a Christian. 
There's no shortcuts or deviations from what I just said. Whether you believe me or not, you'll find out. You try to take that shortcut into a side door into the gates of heaven, and they'll, you're going to run into that locked iron gate. Just as Jesus, <laughs> the Father, put them angels up and don't said, don't you let that Adam back in here. And we're going to do the same to you. You think you can get to heaven some other way, but besides Jesus, grace, and repentance. You're not getting in. No matter how righteous and pious and holy you think you are. Not going to work. Not even your old gray-haired grandmother baking them apple pies, waving the flag. She's not going to make it either. Not that Sunday school teacher. Not that old man that's in the pulpit telling you he'd give you the shirt off his back full of wisdom and wise. You try to come in through any other way, the gospel of Jesus Christ. You think that church doctrine is going to get you to heaven, do what the church says, obey their rules and regulations? You think you're going to get in? That flaming, <laughs> that flaming sword of the arrows of the angels is going to be right there. Blocking your way. There's only one way into heaven, that's through Jesus. And you're not going to get there now unless you repent, accept, and obey Jesus. If you for one moment think you don't have to obey the New Testament writings of Jesus, the apostles and evangelists to go to heaven, you're wacky. You're in whack plan number one. Listen to this, Jesus speaking. <clears throat> John, if you love me, keep my commands. And I will pray the Father who shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Now, if you guys don't know what that is, talking about the Holy Spirit. Jeffy, you, you catch what he said? If you love me, keep my commands. All these people living their life unto themselves, they don't love the Lord. <laughs> They're rebellious sinners. They don't care about Jesus. They're going to have a good time, Charlie, in their life, and them and theirs. Oh, I know God loves me. I don't have. I know I should do this or that, but hey, I'm a good old boy. Oh, God's not going to cause that rain to rain, and we're all going to die like that old man Noah said. That's not going to happen. Right? You think you can hoodoo God? You think you can get around that bush, that burning bush of truth and knowledge is in Christ Jesus? You think you can look at that bush? I don't have to take my shoes off. I don't have to be holy before God. I can live my life any way I want. I can believe me anything I want. I got it right. I'm a U.S. citizen. I'm a world global citizen and, and I'm going to coexist and have respect for all religions. I don't believe that the Jesus stuff is real. You're going to burn in the fire. All right, but Dodo, come help me, Dodo. I got Dodo. I packed him up, right? But I had to get him out. Dodo, you agree with me? Look at that. He says yes. Don't forget Dodo's watching you guys out there. All right, here we go. How to be spiritually born again. My name, Missionary Norman Edgar, GodSpokesman.com. We have four domain names. GodSpokesman.com. All right. <coughs> How to become a Christian today.com. NormanEdgar.com. MongNews.org. Go there. It all goes to the same website. I'm the admin. All right, if you love me, Jesus said, keep my commands. Again, how do you be spiritually born again? How can you become a Christian? There's no other way but through Jesus. Here's how it happens. And this is really going. This is the truth, guys. You can't get there any other way. You're going to have a conversation with God. You're going to say to God, sincerely. You're sorry for your sins. You're going to realize before this, God, you 
contemplated everything you in your life and you know you separated from God. Number two, you're going to say that you want Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And number three, you're going to repent. That means to turn your life to obedience to Jesus' writings as you read, as you understand. Not what a church says. For heaven's sakes, don't go to the churches. You'll just become a religionist. Duh. You ever ask these guys? I said, I've said, I sound like a recording machine. I can put a tape in and just run it every day because I say the same things every day. You ask people, are you a Christian? Oh, yeah, man, I'm a Baptist. I go to Pentecostal because I'm charismatic. I follow Osteen. I follow Joyce Myers. I'm a Benny Hinn. I'm Amish. I'm Midnight. Giddy up. What a joke. All of them. Meaningless. All Protestant Christian book writing, doctrinal beliefs, practices, traditions are absolutely meaningless. Don't do it. Alright? If you love me, keep my commands. Jesus writes in John 14. And I will pray the Father and shall give you another comforter. That's the Holy Spirit of God that he may abide with you forever. God does, if once you become a Christian, God doesn't say, hey, I don't like you now, junk you, adios, no. He said he never leave you nor forsake, even when you give up, because you're going to have trials, you're going to get down in the pit, man. <laughs> God's got a way, boy, don't think he's going to give you a pass. You listen to some of these hoodoo preachers out there, the Swagger and the Osteens and the Joyce Myers and all that garbage. Oh, God's going to bless you. Just send your money to me. <laughs> There's a sucker every day born, right? You know who said that? That great what? That hoodoo man. All right? Barnum and Bailey, the circus man, said there's a sucker born every day. Hey, there's somebody on Twitter saying hello. Good. Back to you. All right. <laughs> Let me see here. Facebook Live. Let's see what's going on here. Let's see. We must have somebody clicking in here. All right. Let's see what's going on. All right. Daniel is in there on Facebook Live. Again, I want to read you something. Why? When you get right with the Lord, here's what's going to happen. The Scripture alone sets forth the true reason of our being in this world. Not for enjoyment, but for trial. Not to gain temporal pleasures or possession, but that our souls may be disciplined and prepared for immortal honor and glory. And it's going to happen. All right. You think this is a cakewalk being a Christian? You're nuts. Again, <coughs> this is Jesus talking. To become a Christian, you're going to have a sincere conversation with God. You're going to say you're sorry to God. You're going to ask God to forgive you of your sins. Number two, you're going to ask and want Jesus as your person personal Lord and Savior because it's through Jesus' shed blood, the atonement, the redemption process that His sinless blood washed away your sins. Number three, you're going to repent. That means to turn to obedience the words of Jesus as you read in the New Testament. Not what someone tells you to do, but what you read and understand. No repentance, <clears throat> no obedience to Jesus' truth, you're not saved. You turn and obey them church teaching, you're not saved. You join them churches, you're not saved. You're just a religionist, lost, lukewarm, could care less about the word of the God. You're more interested in getting along and being a social member so you feel like you fit in. And you will fit in with worldly, lukewarm, meaningless religionists that the churches are plumb full of today. 
You see this great move of Jesus anywhere? You see the sweet love of Jesus anywhere? Not at all. These people, these people that call themselves the religious right, the evangelist, they don't care about you if you're going to hell. They just say, adios, man, we got our own, we're good, man, we're pious because we say we're Christian. Don't believe it, folks. Jesus said, take up the cross of self-denial and come follow me daily. Jesus said, again, John 14, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, he shall give you another comforter, <clears throat> that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. <coughs> When you're genuinely, authentically, spiritually born again, the Holy Spirit of God enters your body, coexists with your spirit inside your physical body, begins instantaneously to renew your mind. All things are passed away. All things become new. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. If you don't experience that, you're not saved. If you think all you got to do is slip your hand up, close your eyes, and repeat a sinner's prayer and everything's going to be good, you're deceived. Simple as that. You can jump up there and say, I can pass Jesus as my Lord. And no more be saved than a man who was dunked in the water, named the Father, Son, and Ghost, still not be saved. Why? No repentance. No turning to obey Jesus' truth as you read them. You follow what the preacher man says. Go to his little classes, Sunday school classes. Listen, man, pay the money to him. Man, you got to tithe. You got to do some law because you got to earn your way along here. Or you can go to them old Southern Baptists. They believe they're, they're chosen by God. They're about going to hell. I will not leave you comfortless, verse 18, Jesus says. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. Forty-three years I've been kicking away at this thing. Why do you think I just keep going day in, day out of this thing? And don't you, don't even begin to think I got a cakewalk of a life. If you could hear half the stories of my life, you... I've told Selma, my wife, I'm surprised at times I'm even a Christian today. I've been through some knocks, okay? And I know that God changed me because I don't have nothing else but Jesus. I don't have nothing else but the grace of God in my life, and I know it. This old thing about, oh, I'm going to be something, I'm going to do something, I'm going to make a life, I'm going to be somebody, I'm going to steady hard, I'm going to work hard, and I'm going to be this, and I'm going to do that. Pipe dreaming. All you're working hard to do is go to hell. But then preacher being, that preacher man ain't going to tell you that. Did you, when's the last time you went to church and the old preacher man looked right at you and said, you're going to hell. Oh man, that's not politically correct. But you died, them fires will lick on you a little bit, then you'll understand, why did he tell me the truth? At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He, this is John 4, Jesus talking, He hath my commandments, and keepeth them. That's the truths of Jesus as you read. The very first truth that you're going to be challenged about is in the first chapter of the first book of the New Testament. The book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 18. You're going to read verse 18. Matthew, chapter 1, verse 18. You're going to read that verse in a couple of verses right there. 
And you're going to decide, is that the truth? Hello, TikTok. He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. The how many times have you heard these hoodoo preacher people tell you, oh, that's not for today. Huh? How many times have you heard that? Jesus says, love God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength. Love me more than your mommy and daddy and your sons and daughters. How many times have you heard that in the preacher man say that to you? You don't hear that. That preacher man don't want you to read the Bible. If you read the New Testament, you would realize that the preacher man is telling you half truth. Half truth is a lie. The Bible says that no liars getting into heaven. Half truth, omitting things, deleting things, presenting a picture falsely is a lie. Lie. Lie, lie. No liars going into heaven. You think that sweet old grandmother of you that tells you, Oh, I pray to the Immaculate Conception. I say my rosary. That's a lie. She's not going anywhere except to the fire. Well, I pray to St. Christopher. I pray to, uh, what was the one I just heard? Oh, I prayed to uh, Ma Mary's mother. <laughs> Ignoramuses out there praying to dead people think they're going to go to heaven. That praying to some dead bones rotted in a grave is going to get you answers to your prayer. They're, they're dingy. If you believe that the Pope has got some kind of a power over anything. He's got demonic power. Nothing more, nothing less. Every spiritual leader that does not believe that Jesus is God, that does not believe in the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist, they're led by the devil. You understand there's only one way to go here. That's the straight and narrow. If you're not in the straight and narrow, you're on the broad way. And that's where the churches are today, these evangelical Protestant Christian churches. Tell me more about what you feel, brother. <laughs> you haven't even heard me yet. I'm just getting started. He had my commandments, and he that had my commandments, this is Jesus talking in John 14, right? He that had my commandments and keepeth them. What's the one thing that Jesus says that people can't do? Listen. Love God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength, and your neighbor. Love God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength. Oh, yeah, that's pie in the sky. Oh, yeah, I love God. Uh, my son, daughter, what do you need? Oh, you need a new car? Oh, you need a new uh, iPhone? Oh, anything you want, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Oh, you shacked up with a guy? You're living with a guy now? Oh, that's not right, but, you know, I'll support you. Oh, you're a homosexual now? You think you're a lesbian? Oh, I love you and support you. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I... Your friends taking dope and drugs? Oh well, we don't we don't want to condemn him. He'll work through that. We'll just have to pray for him. Yeah, everything is going to be all right. Listen to this again. Love God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength. Jesus said, and your neighbor. Obviously, not because Jesus has style, has style too. <coughs> Meaningless statement. I don't understand what you just said. All right. He that had my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, 
and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. That's being spiritually born again. How do you become spiritually born again? Number one, you'll say to the Lord sincerely, not some rebound off of somebody in some emotional distress. How much medicine do you take every year? Because I would like some. <laughs> hey, Dodo, you hear, look, Dodo's got the answer. Dodo, tell him how much we take. What? Oh, Dodo says that Folgers coffee will do it for you early in the morning. Let's see, it's uh, 9.30 here. Since you remind me of that, let me have a drink of my Folgers. I'm broadcasting from my home, and I've been broadcasting, believe it or not, for 18 months on Periscope, Twitter, Facebook Live. Quarter of a million likes on Periscope. 30,000 views on YouTube. 28,000 on Periscope views. Very few people, really, are on fire for Jesus. It's really sad. I've been a Protestant Christian missionary 43 years. Five tours in Asia, seven years in New Mexico. It's really sad. People don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe the Bible. It's very discouraging as a missionary. <clears throat> All right? But we'll just keep on. Right, Dodo? See, Dodo's got enough sense to realize that God is the author and finisher of our faith. Alright? There's people that absolutely do not fear God sitting in the church houses every day. They don't care. They don't do anything they want. Believe anything, say anything. They don't care. Alright, let me read you some more here. This is gonna this will rock your little boat out there. <coughs> We're talking about being spiritually born again. Now listen to this. Jesus just said in John, He said, if you love me, you keep my commands. Okay? That means you obey what Jesus states in the New Testament. You know what Jesus said, crazy people with ugly shirts that don't love anyone, they are hanging like you. Thank you! I've been, I've been told that many times. I like my shirt. Dodo! Dodo, tell him. You like my shirt? Look, Dodo said, yeah, man. Go away, man. Don't you know what's cool? Uh, no. Hey, you don't say cool anymore. You say sick. Man, you're sick. Huh? Eat your heart out, all right? So you think, so you think gays are okay. <laughs> I wish you'd stay with me. I'd, I explain about the sodomites to you, all right? Homosexuality, transgenderized people, and the rest. I would share that with you, but that's not the topic today. If you don't feel sorry for the sexual deviants, then you're not, you're not a Christian. They are tortured people. Okay. If you don't have compassion for them, what good are you? <coughs> they are sexual deviants and they're locked into that by the demonic powers. Their life is terrible. Don't ever think that they're rocking on the high side. The, in the Bible, in the New Testament, when you read the New Testament, it states unequivocally about sin, okay? And homosexuality and lesbian, that's sin, okay? But, in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament, only, so man, so man or man is okay like some serious loving. So, in the New Testament, when you read about sin, there's only one sin that goes into great detail 
about the character of that particular sin the persons that commit that particular sin okay and when you read the characteristics of the person that commits these sins of homosexuality all the sexual deviance all of it pedophilia lesbian trans the whole thing when you read the characteristics of that sin in the protestant christian bible new testament you have to have compassion for them tortured individuals okay if you don't you're just the old mean not saved people are dying and going to that fire in hell and the purpose of the spiritually born again is to do what the will of the father in heaven the will of the father in heaven his will is he sent jesus to save everybody including you will you give your heart to jesus today will you live for jesus today that's your decision what are you going to do i think you already know don't you all right here we go <clears throat> i'm talking about how to be spiritually born again so i love jesus but i as a man enjoy it. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Alright, so number one, people think that all they have to do is to convert. That, that they can decide, well today I'm going to stop drinking, drugging, and sexing. And I'm going to go to the church. I'm going to turn over a new leaf. And I'm going to listen to the preacher man. And I'm going to go to church. And I'm going to do what he says. I'm going to drag my children and my wife or my husband. We're going to go in there. And we're going to do right, be right, see right. And that's what a lot of people think. All you got to do is get up and go to that church. All you got to do is open that Bible and read it. All you got to do when the preacher man says with your eyes closed, your head bowed, raise your hand if you want to accept Jesus today, and you slip your hand up. You go to some religious classes and you think you're saved. You can get baptized in that water and name the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and think you're a saved individual. You're now a Christian. You can sign on the dotted line, go to those religious classes, pay them some money every week, thinking you've been a Christian. Welcome to Dodo Land. You know more Christian than a man in the moon. Just like Dodo here, it's not going to get live. And Jesus, please stop. Where are you? Where are you? All right, listen to this. How to be spiritually born again. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Listen to that again. For by grace, what is grace? Grace is God's power, strength, love, and favor. He, God, the creator, the spiritual substance that man has called God, condescends down to us, his created beings. This grace, all right? For by grace you have been saved through faith. Now get this, faith, believing in Jesus as his God-man Jesus, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, His grace that enables you to believe in the God-man Jesus, in His atonement, in His shedding of the blood, His blood, for the remission, for the cleansing of all sin on the planet. 
What people don't understand today, all six or seven billion on the planet today, men, all humanity today, June 19th, 2017, all people have been freed from the power of sin, guilt, and condemnation. All people are free of sin through Christ Jesus by being spiritually born again. You can become a new person in Christ Jesus by the power of God. That's the gospel message. But today, for 2,000 years, the world today, 2017, by the billions, that's with a B, reject this Protestant Christian Bible. New Testament truths of Jesus. They reject that just as much as they scorned and laughed at Jesus on the cross. It's the same thing today. You don't believe me? Look at this guy that's chatting on me. Facebook Live. There's a guy on... Uh, I'm in recovery. No, you're not in recovery. You're in sin. All right? You that say you're in recovery. <laughs> I have something I want to read to you. Hey, listen, see? See what I mean? This is the kind of people you deal with here. I want to read you something. Let me, uh, hold on. Hey. Uh, Lebosi. And I got some. Hold on, don't run off. I hope you'll listen to this. Uh, okay. Hold on. Hold on, Lebosi. I want you to hear this. This is for you and your recovery. All right? You'll like it. <laughs> All right, hold on. I got it here. Where is it at? I think I pulled it out today. I figured I'd be getting jokers like you. All right, hold on, man. Don't run away. Don't be ashamed. Ah, here it is. This is for you, the guy that says he's in recovery. All right, listen to this. This is not long. It's just short. Don't know he's going to listen. I'd be, in, I'd be in sin when I... Oh, man. Isn't that something? Well, let me tell you, if you're going to kick my little butt, you won't get a virgin, <laughs> okay? All right, here we go. That's pretty good that you get to talk to a 71-year-old man like it. Don't you feel good? Mm, that's the sin nature. Listen to this about these guys that are in recovery. Listen, this men and women in recovery. Listen to this. this and they all have one thing in common. Listen. The statement in the first step of any program, alcohol, drugs, sex, uh, staring at walls, whatever. It doesn't make any, they got a program for everything. Everybody's in recovery. All the, all the little people that want to believe that, that's what they're in, recovery. All right? I say little people because the majority of people aren't in recovery. A small group of people. The statement in the first step that the individual is powerless over the substance abuse related behavior at issue refers to the lack of control over this compulsion, which persists despite any negative consequences that the person may endure as a result. Okay, the first step that all these recovery people do is they're powerless. They can't do anything about their compulsion. Listen to this. Here is a list of some of these recovery groups. Listen. Compulsive hoarding. Distractibility. Eating disorders. Dis Functional enabling, hyperactivity, hypomania, insomnia, irritability, lack of motivation, 
laziness, mania, panic attacks, psychosomatic illnesses, poor impulse control, procrastination, self-injury, and suicide are self-murder attempts. Got it? Oh, first thing you got to admit, I can't, I'm powerless over compulsive holding. I'm powerless over distractibility. I'm powerless over eating disorder. Mm, I wonder what they call that gluttony. Anorexia. I wonder what you call that. Self-mutilation, self-destruction, leading to self-murder. Dysfunctional enabling. Oh, I can't fit in with anybody. I'm just, oh, I can't believe what Jesus said. I can't believe the Bible. I can't do this. Hyperactivity. Oh, I just got to stay up on things. I got to go, go, go. Hypomania. Insomnia. I got little PM pills all over that you can take. Irritability. Oh, irritability. Why people say that about me? Lack of motivation, that's you guys out there, lack of motivation. Laziness, that's you guys, not me, that's you. <laughs> Panic attack, psychosomatic illness, poor impulse control, that's you guys again, not me, I'm good. Procrastination, well, I got a little bit of that, okay. Self-injury and suicide attempts, you believe that joke? That becomes your religion, you're as bad as the atheist, that's your belief system. You think that's going to help your life? Well, you just keep believing your heart, you're powerless over anything and it'll control you. Duh! Doesn't take a scientist to figure that one out. Alright, here we go. Grace. God's power, strength, love, and favor. Loves you guys. He sent Jesus to save all you recovering folks. All you good, righteous, pious folks. God sent Jesus to save you. All you sinning, no good criminals, you pedophiles. God sent Jesus to save you. All you policemen, firemen, doctors, teachers, goody two-shoes. God sent Jesus to save you. There's no difference. All of you are controlled by sin. Until you're regenerated, sin is the dominating force in your life. You don't believe that? Reread what you write. Foul, filthy. Okay. Galatians 2, 16-20. Listen to this. Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Christ Jesus. Well, I'll just do good things. My neighbor's house burned down, and I'm going to show him the grace of God and my love, and I'm gonna, I want him to look at my life. I'm going to do these good deeds for this person. And then he's going to look at my good life, and then he's going to come to my church because he saw my good actions by my good life. Our church helped all these people. So people will look at our lives and look at our church and say, Wow, I want to be like those people who gave themselves and come and help me during my tornado, during my earthquake. During my tragedy. That's the height of self-pride. Osteen down there in Texas in that arena got thousands of people. You know what he says? Look at my life. I won't judge you, he says. Oh, people go, oh, I want to be like Joel Osteen. I want to have that kind of attitude. I want to be like Rick Warren. Oh, I want to be. Oh, I want to be like Benny Hinn. Oh, he's got. He he says we can have wealth and and good thing. Oh, I want to be like Benny Hinn. Crazy, isn't it? The gospel message is centered on one person. 
Jesus. No church doctrine, no writings of men, nothing. Jesus. Galatians, listen to this. These guys that tell you you can't eat meat, you can't eat pork, you got to observe the Sabbath, you can't do this, you got to wear this, you got to dress like this. These are legalists. These are people that keep the law to prove that you're a Christian. You got to not do this and not do that, and you got to obey this rule, and obey that. If you don't do it, you're not a Christian. And you know where that leads? That leads you to the to the back door of the church and they tell you or the temple, get out. There you go. Nevertheless, Galatians two, this is from the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament. Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Christ Jesus. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Since by the works of the law no flesh will be justified. But if, while seeking to be justified in Christ, we ourselves have also been found sinners, is Christ then a minister of sin? May it never be. For if I rebuild what I have once destroyed, I prove myself to be a transgressor. Titus 2 states, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men. God's power, strength, love, and favor is called grace. This spiritual substance that we call God, the creator of everything there is, His condescending down to us, enabling us to help us to understand how to be saved is called grace. Again, from the book of Titus in the New Testament, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men. Everyone here, Facebook Live, all right, and Periscope, Twitter Live, I'm broadcasting live on both. Salvation is today. Hey, Nestor, how you doing down there? All right, let me send Nestor messages. What I like about this is you can chat back in real time. And I like that, all right? <clears throat> Let's see if he's still with me. Nestor. All right. All right. Let's see if we can get that. There we go. All right. Isn't that good? Now, there's other programs out there that you can go live on. It's more professional. And I've looked at them. And for 18 months, I've been broadcasting on Twitter, Periscope, and Facebook. Uh, what I've found that, for me, the audience has to I don't want to, we did YouTube videos. I have, I have over 240 YouTube videos. It's easy to make a video. But the interaction is what you need. And it keeps things real. Okay? In my opinion. <coughs> Alright? Galatians 2. Talking about grace. Being saved. Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Christ Jesus. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus, so that we may be justified by faith, and not by the works of the law. Okay? Titus, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men instructing us to deny ungodliness 
worldly desires and to live sensibly. This is what a spiritually born again person, this is their life. This new life that's available to all when you're spiritually born again. If someone tells you you're a sinner as a Christian and you can never be anything but a sinner, that's the devil talking to you. You listen to those people in the churches, they'll tell you, we're sinners and we can never get out of sin. They are anti-Christ people. They don't believe the Bible. All right? For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires, and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of, our, of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. But we believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus in the same way as they also are. Grace. God's power, strength, love, and favor. God enables you to come to Him. All right? Being justified as a gift by His grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. This idea that you can change your life, that you can convert from being a sinner to becoming a Christian, that you can do that is impossible. All you're going to do is go from sinner to a religion or religion to a religion which will lead you straight to hell. The only way you're going to go to heaven is if you're spiritually born again. Simple as that. There is no other. Maybe a whole lot of other folks want to, and you like to hear somebody say, oh man, you're going to heaven. Don't believe it. You're going to the fire. Not unless you get born again. So how are you going to get born again? Number one, you're going to have to say to God, you're sorry for your sins. Number two, you're going to have to ask Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior. Three, you're going to have to repent. Ask God. You're going to believe what Jesus writes and you're going to do it. If you don't agree to obey Jesus' writings in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament, you're not a Christian. You'll die and go to hell. Now, you don't have to believe that. But all you got to do is read that Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament. The book that's been here for 2,000 years. But if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. Even when we were dead in our transgression, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. So you old foul-mouthed sinners out there that's writing this vile and wicked things here on Twitter and, and uh, Periscope, listen to what he says here. Even when we were dead in our transgression, He made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Now, when you write all that feel filthy, feel foul, filthy stuff, you actually think that you are being yourself. And you're expressing yourself. This is how you feel. You're gonna, you're gonna tell me that. You're, you're in sin. Evil dominates your mind, and you can see it coming when you're right. It's from your heart. You're an evil person. It's sad. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to, to Titus 2.11. Listen to this. 
For the grace of God has appeared. Jesus has appeared. Bringing salvation to just a couple? No. It says bringing salvation to all men. Today, Mr. Foul Filthy there on Twitter, you have heard the message of salvation. <coughs> so that being justified by His grace, we would be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. You have to be born again. Okay? Now, we're going to keep on going. Now, guess what happens when you're ashamed of Jesus? This is this is what's happening here. Alright, can you read that? Whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed. If you're ashamed of Jesus, and you think you're going to go to heaven, Jesus says, I'll be ashamed of you. Well, I can't talk about Jesus because my friends don't like it. You know, I don't talk about religion and politics. I want, I want everybody to like me, so I'm going to be like everybody else. If you say you're a Christian and you're ashamed and embarrassed to talk about Jesus, Jesus will be ashamed of you. That's for the church people to think they're Christians. Alright, let's go on here a little bit. Alright, this is this. Let me just keep my files in order. <coughs> Let me read you some more here. This is about being spiritually born again. How do you become spiritually born again? Number one, you're going to ask God for forgiveness of your sins. It's going to be a sincere conversation just between you and God. It's not going to be some rebound because some great tragedy happened in your life. You're going to sit with God alone. It's just going to be you and God. There's nobody else involved here, folks. If you think that preacher man in your old church house is involved, you're sadly mistaken. If you want to please people, you can slip your hand up and say, Oh yeah, I love Jesus. You can, you can recite that sinner's prayer. And they'll shake your hand and they'll congratulate you, but your heart will be as black as the day is long going to that fire because you know you're not real. You're going to have a sincere conversation with God, just like that boy that died on the cross next to Jesus. Them two old boys, one mocked Jesus, and the other one got sincere with Jesus. That boy went to heaven. The other one went to that fire. You're going to say to God in a sincere way, God, I'm sorry for being in sin and separated from you. Number two, you're going to want His Son, Jesus, the God-man Jesus, as your personal Lord and Savior. You're thanking Jesus for dying on that cross and shedding His precious, sinless blood, enabling you to be saved. Number three, you're going to repent, turn to, and obey what you read in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. The truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. No church doctrine, not what you've been raised before in the church to believe, but what Jesus says. I can't tell you how many times I talk to people, Oh yeah, man, I'm a Christian. And they say, Yep, I'm a Baptist. I'm a Methodist. I'm Presbyterian. I'm Amish. Mennonite. Charismatic. Sinners. They've not been regenerated. 
They're the religious lost. God does not change. Let's read some things here. And this is about you becoming a Christian. <coughs> I see we got more people there on Facebook joining. So good morning, people on Facebook down here, all right? We're broadcasting on Facebook and Twitter and Periscope simultaneously, all right? We've been on for one hour and ten minutes. And also, the glory of Israel will not lie or change his mind, for he is not a man that he should change his mind. God does not change. You want to hear that again? First Samuel. And also, the glory of Israel will not lie or change his mind. He is not a man that he should change his mind. Listen to this in the Psalms. But thou, O Lord, does abide forever in thy name to all generations. <coughs> of old thou didst found the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. Even they will perish, but thou dost endure. And all of them will wear out like a garment, like clothing. Thou wilt change them, and they will be changed. But thou, God, are the same. And thy years will not come to an end, O God. The children of thy servants will continue. And their descendants will be established before thee. If you've been spiritually born again, you're the descendants. You're walking in the promises. The promises is to do the will of the Father here on this earth. The will of the Father for all spiritually born again people is to go forth, teach, and make disciples. Oh, I, I mean, I can't talk about Jesus. I'm ashamed. Huh? My friend won't be with me. Malachi, for I, the Lord, do not change before you, o sons of Jacob, are not consumed. Remember those who led you, who spoke the word of God to you. And consider the results of their con conduct. Imitate their faith. Verse 8 of Hebrews. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried away by varied and strange teachings. Praise God, does anybody in their right mind understand that? Every Tom, Dick, and Harry's out there writing a doctrine, a book. This means this, this means that. They got every goofy, stupid, ignorant thing that you can imagine the mind of man can come up with. They were like goofiest religious doctrines by the DDs and the RVs and the Masters and everyone in between. The words of Jesus are the truth. You're going to read them. You're going to either say, I believe what Jesus says and I'll do it, or you won't. You don't need somebody with a Master's degree to tell you that. Duh! Hebrews 13, listen to this. This is only, this is only 2,000 years old. 1900. <laughs> Do not be carried away by varied and strange teachings. For it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace not by foods through which those who were thus occupied were not benefited. 
Life is obedience to the will of God. The will of God for all spiritually born again people today is to follow the teachings of Jesus' command. Jesus' great command is to all go forward, teach, and make disciples. Not every other silly little program in between. You got people that put on drama teams. You got every Tom, Dick, and Harry trying to imitate a nightclub with lights low and slow music and lights flashing, whatever, thinking that the power of God is going to come in as long as they just play some slow melody rocking music and slow sad songs and everybody's going to come to the altar and cry their little eyes out and they're going to become a Christian. It doesn't happen, people. The power of God is not mimicked or copied by you creating an atmosphere that you think will do it. You'll get the music and band and the lights and everybody and some sad, pathetic story to tell, bringing everybody to tears thinking that's going to bring their heart close to God. Don't believe it. Jesus looked at the people and he said to them, Hey, you. You. Over there. You. Yes, Lord, I'll follow you, Lord. Yes, Lord, Jesus, I'll follow you. Jesus looked right at him and said, Go, give away everything you got. Not to your family. Don't give it to the people you like. This is a key thing, folks. Jesus said to that guy, the rich man, Give it to the poor. Well, that rich man said, Man, them poor people, they, they'll squander my money. They won't save it. They won't, they'll just spend it on stuff. And I, I've worked all my life. And I've inherited this. And I, I, I have to take care of this money and my riches. He wants me to give it to the poor who don't, are ignorant and don't know how to handle money. They'll just squander it away. What did the rich man do? Turn, walk the other way. Oh, Jesus, I'll follow you, Lord. I'll raise my hand and bow my head off. But first, I've got to go take care of some business. Lord, didn't we do these great works in your name? Didn't we raise people from the dead? We built these great churches, the First Baptist, First Assembly, First this, First that. Oh, we did these great things in your name. Depart from me, Jesus said, you workers of iniquity. You know why they say that? Because they follow their church rules and doctrines. They don't follow what Jesus the Apostle and Evangelist say. They delete parts of what Jesus the Apostle and Evangelist say. And then you got the real hypocrites who write down everything they believe. Everything is crystal clear. And then are hypocrites in the pulpit and don't do what it says. They want to control everything about every church that they're involved in. You know who I'm talking about? That's the Assemblies of God out of Springfield, Missouri. Isn't that something? Those that think they're the most pious are the worst of the lot. They're the true hypocrite. Is the Assemblies of God. They know it. They know I know it too. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today, yes and forever, Hebrews 13. So, to be spiritually born again, you have to ask God for forgiveness. You have to be sincere with God. Number two, you have to ask Jesus into your life. You want Him. Number three, you have to repent, turn to and obey Jesus' truths. In the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament, as you read and understand, you don't agree to do what Jesus says, you're not a Christian. You agree to obey the church, you're not a Christian.
You follow the teachings of a church or doctrinal, traditional. I don't care if you've been raised that and your mommy and daddy's been raised in it. Do all kinds of good things for people. You're going to hell. You're not spiritually born again. Your religion is just like a Hindu, Islam, Roman Catholic. Lost. Going to hell. All of them. <laughs> Jesus is the only way. What do you think this whole thing's about? Christianity is about. I'm sorry that's been whitewashed century after century that, oh, it's all about Christian denominations. No, it's not. It's about you obeying what Jesus states in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. If you don't do what Jesus says, you're not going to heaven. Punto. Duh. Dodo, is that right? Yeah, Dodo said, if you don't obey Jesus as you read and understand, you're going through the fire. Even Dodo understands that. Duh. Now, Selma told me, don't be yelling at you guys on Periscope and Twitter and Facebook. So I'm not going to yell at you, Dodos. All right? Because we love you, Dodos. All right? God sent Jesus to save you, Dodos. Okay? We love you guys. We're going to tell you the truth. I know you don't like it, man. Oh, man. When I was in Reynosa, I had to... I was sharing them churches out and people go nuts. They didn't like it. Sad story. I was in Reynosa, Mexico, right? And so I was down there seven years, lived there too, inside Reynosa. And it is a vicious place to live. The Zetas and drug cartels control Reynosa. They control Mexico. You don't ever think they don't. People go to these resorts in Acapulco, whatever. It is controlled, owned, locked, stock, and barrel by the cartels. It's an evil, vile, wicked place, and people want to go there. There's, Americans are so naive and stupid, they have no idea. And they think they can just dial 911 if there's trouble. There is no 911 in Mexico. You're not a U.S. citizen in Mexico. You're under their rule. Part of the Christian ministry is to go see people in jail. Just like go to the hospital, visit the sick, and all the rest of it. In Reynosa, they have a prison, state prison, state, and the state, there, the state's name is Tamaulipas in Reynosa. It's right across the border from McAllen, Texas, Brownsville area, right there. <coughs> the prison in Reynosa has 2,000 people in it and about 200 women, okay, in the prison. And I wanted to go in there and have English Bible classes. And in this particular prison, they have a school set up inside, run by inmates, and try and have job training for the inmates so when they get out of that place, they can uh, start their own business. If you've been in prison, you might forget trying to go to work for somebody. You just well learn how to run your own business and be your own business. Because you get out of there and you lie to people and they find out you've been in doing time. They'll, they'll throw you away in a heartbeat. So it's best to be your own business, all right? Just make money. And people often wonder how they can make money in Mexico. And Mexico is a wealthy country. <clears throat> all this garbage talk you hear in the United States about illegal immigrants coming to the United States that they're coming here to get a job because they're so poor in Mexico. Don't believe that. That is the number one lie. All right? Here's the actual truth. I lived there for seven years, folks. Lived in there. 
I wasn't supported by any, I made money by having English classes too, but I got in just a little bitty pension money that I got, not from any church or anything. But I was a poor boy and I had to earn the money just like everybody else down there. All right, but I mean, I, I was, it was legal for me to do it because I checked. But I didn't make a lot of money, <laughs> okay. But in Mexico, the value of the peso to the U.S. dollar generally, when I was there, was around 15 to 1. In Mexico, everyone I saw had a cell phone. Everyone had a cell phone. Okay? They would hand them out like candy to people. The price be so low they afford it. The richest man in the world is Carlos Guy who lives there. And he's on big um, AT or uh, what do you call it? The giant in telemarketing uh, not telemarketing, but uh, communications in Mexico and around the world. He's one of the wealthiest men in the world, right there in Mexico. In Mexico now, on the Mexican side along the border from San Diego down to Brownsville, Texas, there's 2,000, over 2,000 businesses international in what they call industrial parks on the Culadores, okay? And so, inside that, every country from around the world is manufacturing things. And then ship them right into the U.S., okay? To th Mexico is making it, right? Mexico, they can't get enough Mexican workers in the factories to work, right? So they broadcast and advertise in the interior of the states of Mexico, and they bring people to Reynosa. Now they consider uh, all the border states as frontier. They consider Mexico being the center of their country, Mexico City, that is. And everything away from that is called the frontier, especially along the border with the U.S. But they can't get enough people to come, all right? So <clears throat> when you go to Mexico now, and you can, if you want, you can go through the poor areas, all that. And that's normal. Every country's got poor areas, okay? But if you take a look, you will see in Monterrey, 40% of their gross national product comes from one export, and that's concrete. They're the world's largest exporter of concrete. Okay? So what the government of Mexico did, all their houses they build the government finances them and gives it to the people, all right? And they're made out of concrete. Now, for a lot of people, and like me, I've never seen a concrete house until I went to Mexico, really. I mean, I, I'm sure I've seen in my five trips in Asia as a missionary, but in Mexico, every house, concrete floor, concrete walls, concrete ceiling. One right after another in subdivisions. Thousands upon thousands. And they've got water and they got electric too. Alright? Got a sink and a toilet. Alright? And it'll be one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, whatever. And then the, the government has a uh, housing program that when you get a job there in the Maquilas or wherever you're working, money is deducted from your paycheck to pay for your housing there. So then they got credit, all kinds of credit set up. You can buy the furniture, you got all kinds of credit set up, you get a car. So, when you go into Reynosa, Mexico now, you will see people living in houses, furniture, car, cell phone. They got satellite, they got cable, they got anything you can pay for, you got enough money to pay, just like anywhere else. Now, 
on the Mexican side of the border, the Mexicanos are living the Mexican dream. You heard that said about the United States that uh, the American dream, have a job, a house, a car, da, 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 right? In Mexico, they're actually doing that. They're living the Mexican dream. But when you cross the border and come to the United States, you hear people in the United States say, them poor, poor Mexicanos. And here's the issue. You got the Mexicanos, they don't want to be like the average Mexicano. They want more money. So they'll break the Mexican law by not buying a visa. They will abandon their family, abandon the tax over 40%, right around 40% of the taxes base of Mexico is lost by young men leaving the 11 or 15 million going into the U.S. You think that they care about Mexico? They do it illegally. They break the Mexican law. They abandon their families. There's no taxes to fix the roads, the schools. The schools paid by the teacher from the taxes. No good teachers, no good anything. Why? There's no taxes. Plus, you got the cartel, and that is the corruption. So everybody escapes this average. You can make it in Mexico and live good. Just keep your nose to the grindstone in Mexico. But you listen to the people here in the United States, you think it's the poorest country on the planet. Mexico is not the poorest place. The problem is that people want to equate their lifestyle the same as in Mexico, as a United States citizen. It doesn't work like that. It's like saying, oh, I want to live like Germany. Well, Germans' money is more expensive than our money. And talk about being expensive. Go to Switzerland. Oh, I want to be equal with them. No, you're not equal with them. I'm satisfied in my life where I'm at. I was satisfied in Mexico where I was at. I was satisfied where I lived in a dirt floor hut in the Himalayan mountains, thanking God, thanking God for the hut. There was no water electric up in the mountain. People need to be grateful and thank God for where they're at and what they have. If you're walking above the earth and alive today, you ought to thank God. If you're as thin as a whale and don't have any food, thank God. Praise God. But what do people do? They'll worship a cow walking right in front of them and they're starving to death. Duh. Doesn't take a rocket scientist on that one to figure out what I would do. Be butcher time. God does not change. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, O sons of Jacob, are not consumed. Remember those who led you, who spoke the word of God to you, and consider their results of their contact. Imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Every good thing bestowed and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shifting shadows. <coughs> I'm going to tell you so, I'm going to tell you another story. We went up in this is 40 years ago when we first went up into the Himalayan mountains. We were the first missionaries to go up to this place. Now we had this uh, goofy idea that we could just walk right up there, be a little path follow, and you just walk into glory land, right? I'm going to raise people from the dead, all this kind of stuff. Well, it didn't work out that way. We trekked through the jungle mountains going up there during the monsoon, mud, falling down. I could tell you a lot of stories. I'm just going to tell you this one. 
It takes the, the Hmong guy about four hours to walk to his village. It took us two days. These guys are like kangaroos. Their legs are like that. I mean, they can just walk. And here we are, old Americanos, right? Pathetic, right? The first night, we're in the jungle, side of the mountain, pouring down rain. And we had a poncho. Right? It was me, my former wife, and the baby. And here we are in the middle of the jungle. And so it, the rain had stopped momentarily. So I dug out around the hillside a little place and laid the poncho down and wrapped the poncho up around us when we laid there to sleep that night. It started to rain immediately. Of course, laying on the poncho, the water went in the poncho. So, but now, I know that this is hard for you to understand, but it was at night, there was no moon, no stars, and the rain was pouring up. You could not see the hand in front of your face. It was so black and dark in that jungle. Rain pouring down. I crawled up, and there was a clump of bamboo there. And now, uh, bamboo, uh, if you're not familiar with bamboo, bamboo I mean, there grows in clumps. I mean, just like trees coming up, they're like a rose bush. Bamboo everywhere in the jungle. And we slid over to that bamboo clump. And we got out of the direct rain a little bit. And that's where we slept. And we thank God for that bamboo plant. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them called into His purpose. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Amen. We'll continue about being spiritual born again. This is Missionary Norman Edgar, broadcasting from our home here in St. Charles, Missouri. God love you guys. God sent Jesus to save you. Get right with God. Amen. Bye-bye.